This lecture is not a lecture, it's a worked problem, basically, where I walk you through how a binary phase diagram works to explain the crystallization of a basaltic system. So let's, this is saying, how do we explain a rock of clinopyroxene and plagioclase, like we see here in this beautiful photomicrograph? Well, we can explain it based on the textures present, or we could use a set of, of, of thermodynamic mathematical, mathematical models validated by experiments to explain the conditions for how this gabbro of basaltic composition worked. So let's get rid of that picture. It was beautiful to have to start, but now what we need to do get rid of that and we're going to do our worked set. So <clears throat> this is just an, to title this will be, this is an example of a binary phase diagram. and it's of a basaltic composition melt. Our melt composition that we're starting with, and so, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through the cooling um, crystallization sequence of a magma that starts at 1500 degrees Celsius and cools from there. So <clears throat> let's just say also up here, we're gonna put that this is a cooling slash crystallization sequence. We're starting, this is just arbitrary, I picked a number and I've worked this example on a sheet of paper and I'm just going to put it on here, um, but we're going to say that this is um, a composition of anorthite 80, diopside 20. And we're starting at the magmas at a temperature of 1500 degrees C, which is very, very hot. But this would be our starting condition, so 1500, here's, oh, how can we do this? I have to be very neat, but what I want you to do is put a very gentle light dash line at AN80, and that is our, this is our starting magma composition, and we're starting at 1500 degrees. Oh, should we start even hotter? Let's start a little hotter. Let's start up, let's start up here. Let's actually change that to 1560. You can use your eraser. So there's our starting conditions of our magma. As we cool this magma down to room temperature, let me show you the path that it's going to take. It's going to sit in this liquid domain, and the very first crystal that forms will form right here at about 1470. Then we're going to follow this thermodynamic slope of this phase boundary, and we're going to grow in crystals, right? You know intu intuitively, as we get colder and colder and colder, as soon as we hit the liquidus, that's the name of this surface, as soon as we hit the liquidus, the first crystal forms, the crystal forms of anorthite. As we go to lower and lower and lower temperatures, more and more anorthite will be produced. At the same time, if we're pulling anorthite out of the magma, that means the residual melt has to be becoming more enriched in diopside. And we can quantify that thing that we've just described, that process, using this diagram, and I'll show you how. At some point, we're going to reach the eutectic point, and at the eutectic point, the, the magma is going to go from maybe 70% crystals, 30% liquid, and it's going to sit there until the rock is a, until the material is 100% solid. You won't actually drop in temperature as you um, crystallize because there's a lot of latent heat of crystallization that's being released that doesn't allow the magma to drop in temperature as it crystallizes. Then once the very last drop of magma disappears, you're gonna we're gonna jump compositionally over to here and then we're gonna keep dropping in temperature until we get to room temperature. So that is our crystallization pathway and now let's do it in a quantified way. So we're gonna march through at different temperatures and for each temperature, we'll say here's T1. T1 will be 1550 degrees C. And for each temperature, we want to know the percent solid, the percent liquid, the composition of that solid, and the composition of that liquid. Okay, so here's there's T1, 1550 is right here, so we'll label that T1, and the percent solid, well, we're above the liquidus, so it is zero. The percent liquid is 100. The composition of the solid is not applicable, 
right, because there is none, and the composition of the liquid, well, it's the same composition of the liquid that we started with. It is AnAdDi20. Let's make something interesting happen. T2. So T2 is going, what I want to have T2 be is this point right here. It's the moment where we first hit the liquidus and the first crystal appears. So this is, let's have it be 1490. T2 equals 1490 degrees C. And we have to do our, our things, percent solid, percent liquid, composition, solid, and composition, liquid. Percent solid is essentially zero because we have just hit the liquidist. We have crystallized one crystal. There's a cubic kilometer of magma and only one crystal. So it's about zero percent. The percent liquid is about 100 percent. The composition of the solid, there's that one crystal. We are on the right hand side of the eutectic. Therefore, the only crystal that is formed is 100 percent anorthite. It's as simple as that, okay? If we are on the right-hand side of the eutectic, only anorthite will form. Diopside will join the crystallizing assemblage once we hit the eutectic point. The composition of the liquid, you find the composition of the liquid by creating an isopleth that drops from that point down. Well, we haven't actually moved laterally at all, so this is the same composition as our starting material because only one crystal has formed. AN80 DI20. Okay, oh boy, we're going to run out of space. I'll do some erasing later. Let's do T3. T3 is going to be at uh, 1400 degrees C. I haven't told you this yet. You're going to need a ruler. You might, you're might. you also going to need this printed out. Uh, okay, so we have to do percent solid, percent liquid, composition of solid, composition of liquid. Let's find where we are. 1400. Here's third. Here it is right here. So we have come down. We have crystallized and crystallized and crystallized. Now the first step that we're going to do is I need to introduce to you the lever rule or lever rule. And what the lever rule or lever rule does for you is it tells you the percent liquid and the percent solid. And you find it by drawing in an isotherm. And we're going to label points of contact along along this line. We're going to put a A is always going to be on the outside. B is always going to be at the junction of the composition and your isotherm and C is always going to be the point on the liquidus. Okay, so let's label this. So we're going to say that uh, how do we do it? We'll go A, B and C. A is always pure component. Always pure crystalline component and B is always the middle and C is always liquidus. That's how you know where to put your letters. And then if you want to figure out what is the percent solid and the percent liquid, well percent solid is going to be the length of the line. So there's like a teeter-totter right here. Okay, we're going to put in like this little teeter-totter. And this side of the line, the C to B length divided by the A to C length is the amount of crystals you have. And this side of the line is the percent liquid you have. And let's put that into your notes here. So our solid is the length of the line BC over the length of the line AC. And our percent liquid is the length of the line AB over the length of the line AC. If you ever get stumped on this, do a little intuition check. Go up to like the hottest temperature. Let's say this was our example right here. We're super hot. We've only crystallized a little bit. Well, which length, this little tiny length, or is this length the percent liquid or percent solid? Well, we're super hot. So if we're super hot, there should be very little crystals. Therefore, the BC should be the percent crystals. Oh yeah, it is, according to the lever rule. Okay, great. So get out your ruler, and we're doing this example now at T3, 1400. You need to measure with a ruler in millimeters the length of this line. I have done that, and uh, on my sheet of paper, it ends up being that the total length of AC is 52 millimeters, 
So I'm going to put that as the denominator on both sides, or for both of these. And then the percent solid was 24 millimeters, and the percent liquid was 28 millimeters. You do some division, and that gives you a percent liquid. Let's see, did I do this right? Percent liquid is 28, uh-huh. It's 54% liquid, and it is 46% solid. We've done that using the lever rule. The composition of the solid is only anorthite, so it's AN100, but we've crystallized now 46% anorthite. That means the composition of liquid must be much more rich in diopside, and we find that by going to the place where our isotherm hits the liquidus, we drop a line straight down, and we say that is the composition of the liquid at T3. So that's what we can say T3 liquid composition. What is that? That's like an AN62 DI38. Okay, you tracking with me? I hope so. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do a little bit of erasing. Bear with me. I want, I want to do this whole example work together. I'm trying, we're not going to rush through it at all. Let's keep T3 over here and I'll erase that in a bit. But let's go through a couple more temperatures. Here we go. T4 at 1300 degrees C. Let's find where 1300 is. It's right here. So I guess that was T, oh wait, that was T3. This is T4. We were going to put in at 1300 our line. We're going to label our lever rule A, B, and C. Wow, look how much bigger the line BC is now. It's colder. It's crystallized more. Let's put in our percent solid, percent liquid, composition solid, composition liquid. Okay. We should have more crystals. To do that, let's do the lever rule. We have to do our AB over AC. I've measured this in millimeters, and now the length of my total line is 74 millimeters. And the length of uh, the liquid part, which is AB, is 27. And the length of my solid part is bigger now, it's 46. So 46 divided by 74 is 62%. That's our percent solid. 27 divided by 74 is 38%. Now, depending on how big your sheet is, if you're following along with me, you're going to have a different amount of millimeters, but the ratio should be the same. And you should probably be within plus or minus 5% of these estimates, or you're being too sloppy. Easy for me to say. I actually am using a ruler on a sheet of paper. This is just a little sloppy here. Okay, uh, the composition of our solid is, we're still a no other phase has joined the assemblage yet. We're still on the right-hand side. So this is AN100. And the composition of the liquid, we do a drop-down line. We hit here. There's our 50-50. This would be like AN46, let's say. AN46 DI54. Now, the next thing that's very interesting that's going to happen is we're just going to reach the eutectic. So I'm going to have T5B that we have just arrived at eutectic. T5 is at 1274, but we're going to put a note to ourselves that we have just arrived. We can spend thousands of years sitting at the eutectic crystallizing. So in terms of time, this is a spot where we spend a long time, potentially. So T5, we've just arrived. T6, we're going to just depart, maybe a thousand years later. So the first arrival at the eutectic point, we're going to put our note, a note to ourselves here, is that eutectic, we've reached the eutectic point, and at the eutectic point, diopside will join the crystallizing assemblage. So uh, we're going to say diopside joins crystallizing assemblage. And we need to figure out all our points. Percent solid, percent liquid, composition solid, composition liquid. We need to set up the lever rule. 
Lever or lever? It. I think both are okay. I feel like in America we say lever more than anything else though. A, B, and C. And we have just arrived here. And so we can do our math. I've got a total length of 80 now. So our denominator is 80. At least mine is. The percent solid is 52 divided by 80, which equals 65%. And the percent liquid is 28 over 80. And that is 35%. The composition of the solid. We have just joined um, the eutectic point. So the very first crystal of diopside has crystallized. But there's only one. There's millions of crystals of anorthite. So the composition is still just about AN100. The composition of the liquid we drop down, and this is going to be around AN42DI58. Now, we're going to let thousands of years go by. And during those thousands of years, a lot of diopside is going to crystallize, and the entire rock will have become crystallized. So T6 is at 1274, and what we're going to do now is we're about to depart the eutectic. We've been sitting at the eutectic for a very long time and the entire rock is crystallized. So what we think about with when we depart the eutectic is that we have the last drop of magma left. There's only one drop. Everything else has crystallized. Well, let's find out our different things. Percent solid, percent liquid, composition solid, composition liquid. We're almost done with this example. At the last drop crystallizing, well, that means the whole thing is almost solid, 100% solid. Percent liquid, well, it's essentially zero. There's only one droplet left. So that becomes very easy when we're departing the eutectic. Well, what about the composition of the solid and the composition of the liquid? Well, the comp if we're about 100% solid, that means the magma that we started with has to now be the composition of the rock that we're ended with, right? conservation. And so the composition of the solid is now AN80DI20. We have crystallized 20% diopside while sitting here at that eutectic point, right? Because when we arrived at the eutectic, we had a composition of AN100, now 20% of its diopside. The composition of the liquid is done the exact same way. That last drop compositionally, we just drop down and it's the same as before. It's AN42 and di 20 and with every increment of cooling from here on out so nothing changes so t7 you could have this be at a thousand degrees c you could have it be at 800 you could have it be at zero let's just do the example percent solid percent liquid composition solid composition liquid well this is all very easy because we're below the solidus. In fact, let's let's add a couple things. This line is called the liquidus. This line here is also called the liquidus right here, right? Just that's the liquidus. That's that's the liquidus. This line right here that's straight across, that line is called the solidus. And since we're at a temperature below the solidus, we are at 100% solid. We're at 0% liquid. The composition of the solid is the composition of the starting material. AN80 DI20. The composition of liquid is not applicable because there is none there. All right, that's your work example. I hope that helps you. Try any other composition, and you will follow these exact same rules, the lever rule and the topography, the liquidus topography rule, and you'll be able to calculate how a cooling crystallization sequence behaves.